In this video, we'll look at procedural textures in Affinity Photo. Now, this is definitely one of the more complicated and advanced features in this program, and it involves some math and programming knowledge. But today, we'll just look at the basics of this feature and how to use some presets. In future videos, I'll give more advanced examples. Procedural textures are a computer graphics concept that goes far beyond just Affinity Photo. Now, traditionally, we use image files to add textures to computer graphics and 3D games. But sometimes these files can get too big and hurt performance. Procedural textures are a way to dynamically generate patterns based on a formula. You can literally generate the entire surface of a planet just with some simple code. In Affinity Photo, procedural textures are a type of live filter layer. So first, in order to see something happening, I'm just going to add an empty fill layer to my design. I'll select Layer, New Fill Layer. I'll just make it some type of middle blue here. Now with that layer selected, I can choose Live Filters. And if I scroll down to the bottom, I can choose Procedural Texture. So I'll click this. Now, depending on the layer type, sometimes you need the procedural texture to be outside above your fill layer. So I'll drag it out there. By default, it's not going to do much. But the easiest way to get a feel for what procedural textures do is to use the presets. So I'll click this presets drop down here. And you can see there's different options. And you can see this one creates a checkered pattern. I can do sine waves. So we have a wave there. There's also a Perlin noise filter. So I'll click this. This is a very useful one, and often it's the basis for creating clouds and other effects. Let me show you a practical example of using a procedural texture. I'll choose one called Oils here. And you'll notice this complicated formula here. We don't have to worry about that too much right now. But what I do want you to notice is these custom inputs down here. This is where we can control some of the parameters that are used in our formula here. So if you look at A, T, and B, R, you'll see they're used up here in the formula. And there's some descriptive text here saying what they do. So over here, we have the control for that variable. If I click the button here, you can see that A controls the zoom level. I can control the turbulence. You can see it's moving around there. And I can also change the brightness. I like these values, so I'll close this window. And we have all the usual functions with the procedural texture. I can toggle on and off. I can also adjust the transparency. And I could also mask it if I wanted. So if I selected a brush, I could click black. And I could mask out part of my procedural texture, but I'll undo that. Now, you may think grayscale textures are kind of boring, but one cool thing we can do is apply a gradient map to them. And a gradient map is a type of adjustment layer. So I'll select adjustment layers here. I'll click this, and I'm going to click gradient map. Now, these colors don't look too great, but what if I want to make it look like some type of lava pattern? Well, I could change the colors. Let's put some yellow here. I'll change this one to orange. Put some more red here. Maybe some black rock there too. I can change the distribution. Maybe I want some more black rock there. In here we have this cool lava texture. I could also reverse it if I wanted. Now it looks a little bit darker. But I think this way looks best. And the cool thing is that we can go back and dynamically update our procedural texture. So if I click on it here, I can change these values. I'm changing the square count here. I can change the turbulence. And the brightness and darkness. So here we have a good example of how to use a procedural texture. Another very common texture is Perlin Noise. This is useful for adding clouds and fog. So I have this landscape here. Let's add a procedural texture to it. I'll click Live Filters, Procedural Texture. And in the presets, I'll select Perlin Noise. You can choose one of the other ones if you want to experiment, but I'll click this one. And I'll just leave it like this, so I'll close it. Now I can change the blend mode to screen. So with this procedural texture selected, I'll choose the blend modes up here, and I'll choose screen. It's kind of a harsh effect. I can change the opacity, so let's dial that down. So now we have a slight cloud effect, but maybe there's too much of it. So I can add a mask. Now, as I said before, the procedural texture itself acts as a mask, but I like to have a little more flexibility with how I toggle my masks on and off. So I just manually add a mask by clicking this button here. And you can see we have a mask there. So I'll select my brush. I'll choose something soft. And on my mask, I can paint out part of my fog. Maybe I just want fog to be down in the bottom. Maybe I want a little bit in the night sky here. Some clouds. So this is what my mask looks like. And we can see the effect our procedural texture is having. Before, after. Before, after. In the next procedural textures video, I'll show you how to use variables. Be sure to subscribe to my channel to get notified when that comes out. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next video.